As Susan mentioned, I'm Joe Larino. I'm the Vice President of Facilities Management at Valley, the Valley Health System. Uh, my responsibilities include all the design, construction, operations, maintenance of all the Valley sites, including the, the new Valley Hospital. Uh, but I'd like to introduce uh, the new hospital to you today um, and show you some, some great photos and, and slides of, of what, what's, been, what's going on and uh, also showing you what it will look like in the future. So here I go. So, and Susan, please confirm with, your, with a nod that you saw me change the screen. I see it. I okay, see it. great. The hospital. Yeah. Okay, so this is, a, this is what you'll see if you're driving up and down Winters Avenue in Paramus. This is the front of the hospital. Um, and this is a rendering of what it'll look like. And in, in a couple of slides, I'll show you what it actually is looking like. A lot, a lot like this slide. And you can see a lot of green, a lot of trees, lots of um, uh, 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 landscaping and so forth. Um, this is a, a, a closer view of the of the front door or the or the main lobby, the first floor lobby, and that's the uh, what we call the port crochet or the carport where patients and their families will be able to stop and uh, either pick up discharge patients or uh, drop off patients under the overhang and protected by the weather and elements like rain or snow. Um, at this point, they could either self park in the parking structure or they can. Um, they can valet, free valet, where the valet uh, uh, driver will, will park your car inside the, the parking structure. This is a view of the back of the hospital or the view from our 140 East Ridgewood Avenue building uh, where uh, you could see lush gardens, paths. There'll be lots of benches and tables back there so uh, families, staff, and patients can enjoy the uh, you know, the outdoor greenery. Paramus requires us to have 20% of our, of our property to be green and landscaped. Uh, we have actually went beyond that and we're at 30% uh, will be uh, mostly green. The around the hospital is about a 12 acre uh, campus. So uh, 20, 30% of that is all uh, green landscaping and, and nice grounds. Uh, this is a view from our second floor lobby, the entrance from the second floor lobby. And right inside that lo lobby is the dining area. Uh, there'll be food, there'll be coffee bar, um, espresso. And you can also uh, see that there'll be tables on the outside that you'll be able to enjoy uh, your refreshments uh, on, a, on a great, lovely day like today. Here's an example, an old rendering of, of our uh, first floor entrance and the lobby where you'll be greeted by a, uh, a re the reception team uh, that can direct you which way to go, uh, whether you're going to visit a loved one in one of the patient rooms or going to the uh, imaging center or emergency department, you'll be directed uh, from this particular, uh, on the first floor lobby's particular reception area. And here's a view of our of our grand lobby on the first floor. This is a rendering. And uh, again, in this area, we plan to uh, not only have visitors come in through here, but at the same time, we will be discharging our patients here. And one of the things that uh, we are doing is usually big lobbies are large, are very difficult to keep warm, uh, especially in the winter months. And what we've done is below the flooring there, you'll see those are terrazzo floors. But what we've done is we've put radiant heating uh, below those floors so that when a patient is being discharged, they'll be nice and warm uh, during the winter months. And here's, a, here's an example close up I have of the actual a rendering of the staircase, uh, uh, the monumental staircase, which brings you up to the second floor lobby. But here's an actual photo of the construction of that staircase. So uh, pretty close, it, it, it needs a little more work. Uh, but we are, uh, we're, we're getting there. This is a very interesting uh, walk. It's from the first floor lobby to the uh, emergency department or the diagnostic imaging area. And we've developed a legacy wall. And what the legacy wall is, it is, it is a timeline of Valley Hospital's history from the pre-1950s all the way through 
to construction. So we look forward to the unveiling of this um, in, real soon. This is a view a rendering of our second floor lobby, similar to our first floor lobby, where we'll have uh, uh, people will enter through from the parking structure to the second floor lobby, and there'll be a team of, of reception, a reception team here to direct you. Uh, whether it's going to the adult uh, patient rooms in the north and the west pavilion, or to the uh, uh, the elevators in our south pavilion, uh, named the, the family care uh, pavilion, or going to the food area, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in this uh, back here, uh, where people will be able to enjoy nice refreshment. Uh, here's a here's another view of that same lobby, zoomed zoomed back. And this is a great photo from the uh, second floor lobby, uh, looking down into the first floor lobby and looking at the outside, the curtain wall glass that we have, uh, being able to enjoy natural light, natural outdoor light, and all the landscaping and, and beauty uh, of all the uh, 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 floral we'll have outside. Here's a, a quick view of our dining area with, with plenty of dining tables. Uh, where we'll, where visitors as well as uh, staff will be able to uh, eat. And here's a view of our, a rendering of our emergency room uh, waiting area. For those of you that have seen our waiting area here, it's rather small, uh, but we've almost doubled in size in terms of exam rooms uh, from approximately 40 to approximately 80 exam rooms uh, in the new emergency room. Um, and this is an appropriate uh, sized uh, waiting area for, the, for, for families to wait while their uh, loved ones are being treated. Here's a view of one of our waiting rooms. And here's a view of, a, of another one of our waiting rooms, typical waiting room that you find on, on each of the patient floors. So for those of you this that have been able, that have the uh, ability to drive past the, uh, the hospital site, this is a, this is a photo taken uh, uh, several weeks ago of the front of the hospital. And you can see, as I mentioned earlier in the rendering, uh, you can see that you know, the, the, the floors are all up, the, the building's enclosed, and now we're working primarily on the exterior. Um, if you've uh, driven by it in the past week, we've started planting trees uh, uh, now several weeks. But you can see uh, here's the area where the parking will, where the people will be able to park off, uh, drop off their patients or pick up patients. Okay. Here's a view of the, the, uh, the back of the, uh, the hospital uh, from our 140 East Ridgewood Avenue building. Uh, and you can see, uh, similar to the rendering I showed you, there'll be a nice majestic garden back here with all uh, paths, benches, tables, so you can enjoy the outdoors on, on a beautiful day. And this is a, a, a nice view. I, I enjoyed this view because it was at sunrise um, several weeks ago. And you could see, this is from our 676 Winters Avenue building. And you could see that the, if you could see my hand here, the, the, uh, this is the emergency room where the uh, walk-ins will come in. This will be a parking lot uh, for those that, that drive into the emergency room. This will be for the uh, ambulances to come in and back up and unload uh, uh, patients uh, through some doors here, which I'll show in a minute. Uh, and then over here is all of our services, our loading dock, our linens, uh, area will be back here. Um, this is what we call the podium building. Uh, on the first floor is the emergency room. And on the second floor is all of our uh, interventional services, our operating rooms, our procedure rooms will all be on the second floor. And the third floor will have all mechanical systems, which will support uh, the first and second floor of this podium building. What we have here nestled into the building is our central utility plant. Uh, we plan to produce our own steam, our own hot water, our own air conditioning, um, as well as produce about 40% of all of our power. And it, it is known as a, uh, we're 
installing what is known as a cogeneration plant. And a cogeneration plant will allow us to power up, as I mentioned, about 40% of our building. Um, it'll allow us to be resilient. Um, should there ever be a power outages, our emergency generators will come on uh, within 10 seconds to provide uh, power to the emergency circuits. But the cogeneration plant will allow us to power up the whole building um, uh, during uh, outages, during storms, during uh, hurricanes, during ice storms. And uh, it is a cleaner way of doing it and will reduce our carbon footprint as well as keeping us resilient. A typical patient room, all of our patient rooms um, at the new hospital will be all single patient rooms. And again, we did this so uh, for, for patient privacy and safety and comfort. Um, you know, we, we said that you know, we, we, we've learned that pa patients that stay in private single patient rooms have better outcomes, uh, shorter lengths of stay, and fewer dis disturbances, but more importantly, uh, lower rates of hospital acquired infections. Um, so we've always, as you can see, this is a very large room. We're over 300 square feet in this room. We have a clinical area for the caregivers to work. Of course, we have the patient zone and then the family zone, which we think is very important in the healing process. And what we've done is we've incorporated different built different patient systems into a 75 inch TV, which will be located at the patient foot wall. And from here, the patients will be able to, um, they'll be able to call their nurses. They'll be able to order food. They'll be or able to uh, low, raise and lower their shades. They'll be able to adjust temperature as well as adjust the lighting all, all from the bedside. Um, and uh, these, this is where we've integrated all our systems. And doctors will be able to uh, display lab results on this TV screen, let's say x-ray results, uh, MRI or CAT scan results, all on the screen at the patient uh, foot, foot wall. And this is a rendering of what uh, an actual patient room looks like, and we've built over 350 of these, and it's, it's pretty close to what this rendering shows. So what's going to be in the hospital? The hospital is going to be approximately 875,000 square feet. Uh, we will have approximately 354 patient rooms um, with uh, 15 neonatal intensive care unit bassinets, um, 70, uh, now close to 80 uh, emergency uh, room treatment rooms. And of course, we'll have a 1500 uh, space parking garage uh, for the use of the, uh, the, the staff, the visitors, um, and the patients. We, we, we broke ground in November of 2019. And right now we're targeting more toward uh, the end, toward the end of the winter months in 2024 to move in. And we have, you know, lots of, uh, we have different rooms, medical surgical rooms, critical care rooms, uh, pediatric, postpartum, antepartum, and so forth. So there's, we have lots of uh, things going on as well as the emergency department, diagnostic imaging, interventional, where we said all of our procedures in our operating rooms are, as well as support services like lab, pharmacy, central sterile, and a kitchen. So this is a sort of a view up from high of what the site will look like when it's completed. And it's pretty much, uh, you know, done this way. But if for those of you that are familiar with our Lucko Pavilion, it's located right here. This is our same day surgery and our cancer uh, treatment center that we have on, on Valley Health Plaza and Winters Avenue. Uh, this is our 140 East Ridgewood Medical, 140 East Ridgewood Avenue Medical Arts Building, uh, which is uh, the mirrored building located on East Ridgewood Avenue. And these are the major components. This is the South Pavilion, which has been recently named the Family Care Pavilion. 
This is the North Pavilion, the West Pavilion, and then of course the podium building that I showed earlier that housed houses the emergency room and the uh, and the um, interventional uh, operating room area. And this is just the stacking on each floor, what it has. Uh, for instance, the the North Pavilion on the first floor has materials management. It has all of our prep recovery rooms uh, for the ORs, sterile processing, and then of course all the in thirty six on each floor of that pavilion we have thirty six uh, uh, rooms with private beds. the The West Pavilion is very similar to the North Pavilion, and has different administrative services on the lower levels, but then the Family Care Pavilion, which used to be called the Women's and Children's Pavilion. Um, on, the, on the first floor, we have the lobby. Second floor, we have the dining area. Third floor, we have labor and delivery and the C-section ORs. We have neonatal intensive care unit for the uh, babies. The fifth and sixth floor have two floors of postpartum uh, for the mothers. And then on the seventh floor, we have pediatrics of uh, uh, 14 beds of pediatrics. And here's a, uh, we've, we've built mock-ups uh, before we started uh, building the new hospital. And these, this is uh, photos of the actual mock-ups. Uh, we, we decided to build them out first in our 140 East Ridgewood Avenue building. And then once we were, we, we had the end users uh, come in uh, the nurses come in, the caregivers come in and make comments. And based on their comments, we decided to uh, make changes to the design and were able to build it as, as more of a user-friendly uh, room. Here's some photos of the, of the actual construction going on uh, in the patient floors. This is photos of what the the mock-up of what the bathroom would look like. And this is the bathrooms being installed in the new hospital, very similar to the mock-up. These are the patient bathrooms. And then I showed you earlier the, the, a rendering of the, of the emergency room patient waiting area. And this is the actual one. And this is where the patients would walk in if they drove up, uh, would walk in through here and, and behind this photo, there is a um, uh, the reception area where they will be uh, registered in. These are the doors going in for the uh, ambulance entrance in the back of the emergency room. Uh, they're sliding doors so the patients can be uh, wheeled in very easily on, on stretchers. And this is our kitchen area. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, patients will be able to order food uh, through their uh, their footwall TV and their handheld uh, uh, what, pillow speaker. Uh, but we've decided to do more of a uh, room service, similar to uh, a room service format, similar to you would find in hotels. So patients will be able to order food, customize their food. And this vast kitchen will support uh, that kind of, uh, you know, of, of, the, of those ordering for, for our patients. This is the second floor lobby being completed, the flooring being completed. And uh, this is one, one of our patient floors, uh, four north, uh, the, which is the north pavilion. And this is uh, you know, all the flooring going in, as well as cabinetry um, and uh, you know, walls being painted and being completed. And this is a nurse station, one of our nurse stations. Each one of the floors has two nurse stations. This is one of them. And you can see that it will, it will house multiple uh, 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 nurses and staff uh, in order to uh, support the, the patients that are on that particular floor or unit. And this is a patient room. This is a, 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 one of the finished products or nearly finished product. Uh, this is the foot wall with a 75 inch TV will be sitting in, this is a finished bathroom in the, you know, in the uh, patient room. Here's the flooring going in. 
And this is the head wall that will support the bed and the patient, uh, patient's head, which will go here. All the medical gases, oxygen, medical air, medical vacuum, as well as all the outlets and all the monitors to support the patient and monitor the patient. So one of the things uh, that we did was uh, we, uh, in Ridgewood, we have only eight elevators, eight elevators to serve all three, uh, Chiel, Bergen, and, and our Phillips building. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of mixing of different, uh, you know, there's patients and staff and visitors and food and linens going in together. So what we did in Paramus was we built 23 elevators, which will allow us to, to separate the patients, the visitors, and the staff. And you know, foods and supply deliveries and, and, and waste removal can happen in separate behind the scene elevators. Um, and this is what the breakdown is. We have seven dedicated elevators to visitors only. We have 11 patient staff and supply elevators. We have two elevators dedicated to the emergency room and the OR should an emergency case come in into the emergency room and require a, a you know, procedure. We have one elevator dedicated to soil instruments coming out of the operating rooms, one dedicated to elevator uh, to food, and one de dedicated as a freight elevator to bring heavy equipment up and down. So you can see it'll the, the, the separation will assist us in, in, in being able to number one, not mix uh, two different services, but at the same time will allow uh, deliveries to happen and quicker and pay and families to get to their patients a lot quicker. So one of the good things was that, uh, you know, the silver lining of COVID, you bet you never heard anyone say that, but we were in design in the middle of all this. And uh, during design uh, of COVID uh, and COVID hit, we were able to change things that would allow us to uh, better uh, cope with a, any future pandemic. Um, for instance, we were able to take to increase the amount of negative pressure rooms, isolation rooms, both in the patient area and in the emergency uh, department area. We're, uh, uh, we're able to make the, you know, the whole unit negative to protect the people surrounding it should, should we uh, encounter or have to uh, close off areas for future COVID outbreaks. Um, we put this little gray thing that you see on, on, on here as a, it's a IV tube pass-through, which is outside. You can see the, the picture on the right there, but will allow nurses to bring the IV pumps and monitoring equipment out in the hallway and pass it through here into the patient. So should there be a, a patient that tests positive for COVID, uh, they would not have to keep putting on masks, uh, N95 masks and, 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 and bonnets and, and old aprons, uh, which is uh, very wasteful to go in and out of the patient room. So, you know, so we've, we've installed these outside each of the uh, patient rooms. Uh, we've allowed for social distance, distancing in different areas. So we've increased the distance between each uh, piece of furniture. And we've increased all our medical gas outlets and electrical outlets in all the, uh, in our head walls. So what's to happen to Ridgewood? Uh, we still plan on having a very vibrant campus in Ridgewood uh, to, and we're currently researching the different services, healthcare services that will either remain there or will be added. Uh, we may consolidate some of our off sites and, and move them to the Ridgewood campus. And, um, you know, we are looking at different, different things like, for instance, our, our, our lab, uh, outpatient lab, outpatient diagnostic imaging to remain there. So uh, rest assured that we are, the Ridgewood campus is not going away. It will remain a full, uh, vibrant campus in Ridgewood dedicated to healthcare services. So. And I believe with that, that's the end of my slideshow. So I'm going to stop sharing. Wow, that's so exciting, Joe. It's really, Thank you. Um, and it's interesting that it's uh, 
you know, pretty much on time. Uh, did somebody was just asking, um, would you say so it would be 2024 would be the opening at this point you're um, hoping for? Sure. And um, we are we have determined that uh, we'll be ready to move uh, in the winter months. But we felt that it's uh, at the height of flu season, at the height of a possibility of another COVID outbreak outbreak, why should we move our patients? And the possibility of a snowstorm. Mm. So we've decided that we are not in any rush. And although the building will be completed uh, and all the systems uh, complete and ready to go, we're going to wait till the springtime or after the winter months uh, to uh, move all the patients from Ridgewood to Paramus. That makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking, I'm not getting the question here. I don't know if you could answer this about traffic patterns and concerns about 17 and, and some of those roads. Is there anything you can tell us about that or thoughts? Absolutely. Yeah. So as part of the approval process, um, um, the borough Paramus had asked us to have a traffic uh, engineer or consultant analyze the traffic patterns and how that would affect um, you know, the traffic, should there be a, you know, a hospital built in that area. Mm -hmm. And um, as we all know, Paramus already has enough traffic problems, especially during the holiday season. But uh, rest assured, uh, you know, we have, we have done lots of work to alleviate any of the concerns, for instance, widening of East Ridgewood Avenue. Um, uh, we have put uh, additional bus shelters and bus stops along Winters Avenue. We have put in traffic lights, which are smart lights that determine uh, when they should be changed uh, green or red based on the amount of cars that are queuing. And once they, once they change color, it'll be that, that color throughout the whole row. So the purpose of that is to reduce any traffic, um, uh, especially in, on East Ridgewood Avenue and Winters Avenue. Um, it's very accessible. It's more accessible. Uh, the new site is more accessible than it is here in Ridgewood, uh, because you know we're we're very in a very residential area here. Uh, but there are many ways in. There are multiple entrances uh, to from East Ridgewood Avenue, from Winters Avenue, from Macalley Drive, uh, from Fromm Road, where you can access the the hospital. So. Ridge, um, the, the borough of Paramus was very satisfied with the report and the simulations that we gave them. And uh, they gave us, as it was part of our contingent approval, which they gave um, shortly thereafter. Oh, that's wonderful. Very good news. Somebody had a question about the Alexander mural. Is that, yeah. uh, <laughs> is that a rumor or? <laughs> no, not at all. There was, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, Valley will be bringing the murals back to oh, uh, Paramus. Uh, they were, I believe they were taken down in 96, uh, around that time uh, when, when Alexander's closed and we have them and we will be, um, we will be uh, placing them throughout our garden and, and inside uh, near in our conference center inside the hospital, we will be placing them uh, throughout as well as the adjoining buildings. So it'll be a great tribute to uh, the artist, uh, Mr. Stefan Knapp, uh, who did a, a wonderful job painting this. So we're currently restoring them and we will be placing them, uh, like I said, in different monuments throughout the site. That's wonderful. So many of us grew up uh, knowing that that mural well. So that's great. And just one more question about um, the parking. Will it all be uh, garage parking and will it be as confusing as hacking? <laughs> Uh, I can know, but will it be all parking and garages? Yes, we have a six level garage, 1500 uh, parking spaces. Um, and it, it'll be right, like I mentioned earlier, you can either drive directly to the garage and self park and it'll be free. There'll be no charge. We will not charge for parking. It'll be free. Or you can choose to come to the front, to, to the first floor lobby. Uh, where you could drop off and then self park, or you can have a valet uh, person park it for you. So it is very straightforward. There's actually two entrances to the garage: one from the front and one from the front of the hospital, and one from the back of the hospital. And we will be designating 
uh, where visitors can park and where doctors can park and where where uh, employees can park. So it's we're in the process of of doing that right now. Wonderful. And somebody just said they saw some garage pieces in the Lord and Taylor parking lot. That's Is right. That, okay. They were we are we are staging all the precast pieces there, and they're they are going up right now as we speak. That's wonderful. That it just very exciting. And thank you so much for taking your time. So many of us have been so curious and are very, very excited about this uh, new venture. My pleasure. Thank you, Joe. And thanks, everyone.